So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology should you buy the Galaxy S21 Ultra in mid 2022. I covered this phone multiple times last year when it did come out and not so much this year, but I wanna cover it again because take a look at this price point. This phone is massively discounted from its original MSRP, which was really around, you know, 1100, 1200 bucks. So you can get this thing now for around 660. And if you look for it used, maybe even less. And man, are you getting quite the phone for that price point? So you're looking at a 6.8 inch display here. This is a dynamic AMOLED 120 Hertz. You know, you're getting quite the resolution here on this panel. In addition to that, you have a quad 108 megapixel periscope camera on here, and this thing can zoom up to 100 times. So that telephoto on there is just absolutely boss, and it could do 10X optical, so it gets really good zoom photos. In addition, you will either be paired with a Snapdragon 888 CPU, as my edition has right here, or the Exynos 2100, which I don't really prefer, and you'll get either 12 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. How Housed inside is a massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Android 12 on board, this phone is still getting updates. So essentially all these specs just tell me that the Galaxy S21 Ultra is still a heavy hitting phone right now, mid 2022, especially in the specifications. It does weigh 227 grams and you will be getting Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and the rear sandwiched around an aluminum frame. Overall, I really like the shape of it. It's pretty narrow, you know, it's not a super wide phone. So if you like really wide devices, it's not that, but it's tall and it's got some weight to it. It's really comfortable to hold, pretty easy to one hand as well. So overall, I'd say the actual feel, the body, the build, pretty good IP68 dust and water resistance. It's a pretty solid feeling phone. Even now it feels just as premium as say a 13 Pro Max or even something like an S22 Ultra. It's pretty much the same thing. So let's talk about the display panel. HDR10 plus support, 1500 nits of peak brightness on this panel. You also get yourself 89.8 screen to body ratio with a little punch hole cut out here on the top of the display. Now, what I really like about this is it does have S Pen support. I don't have it on me at this moment, but you can also do S Pen support on here. In addition to that, the Galaxy S21 Ultra does give you the ability to rotate this most like other Samsung phones as well. So you can really take advantage of split screen modes and stuff like that with this larger display. It's actually quite enjoyable to use right here. So I gotta say, I just really enjoy the display. It's, it really takes good advantage of this panel and it just looks super colorful. And not only colorful, it's not oversaturated. You can tweak it down to a natural mode and stuff like that, but really everything just pops still. And this would pass easily for a 2022 Premier display. So phones have matured and the S21 Ultra was already mature. You can see that the chin looks slightly larger than the forehead, but you know, it's still really good. And you can see there's minimal bezels along the side. So this panel is fantastic. And not only that, when you are reading news articles, for example, you will find yourself incredibly sharp text. So let's go ahead and go to something tech related. Go to Samsung Newsroom, for example. And let's just take a look at this article. The text that you see on here is fantastic. It actually looks sharper to me than any iPhone on the market today. So this is a really good panel if you care about screen resolution. You're talking 515 pixels per inch. And not only that, this does also provide you always on display, which is something we didn't even see introduced just yet on iOS 16. So maybe we'll see it in the future iPhone 14. It does have support for it, but you can see you can already get that right now. So we do have one UI 4.1 across the Android 12 UI on here. So definitely a more Samsung inspired experience, but at the same time, I gotta tell you, this is one of the best running versions or phones that ran Samsung software that I have seen ever in my experience using this platform. You know, the Samsung Galaxy, you know, One UI combined here with the Android 12, they optimized it very well for the GS21 Ultra. So definitely it's just great. It just runs smooth and actually to me performed better than what I found on the Note 22 Ultra, the S22 Ultra, whatever you wanna call it it performed better in the NAT phone. So definitely 
This phone right here is a boss performance. <laughs> it performs great. The software is Samsung through and through. You got the Play Store, you got the Samsung experience, you got the Samsung ecosystem. It all does well. So definitely pick and choose your platform. But if you're looking for one of the most feature packed phones on the market today, this one still holds its own against any of them. And in terms of the storage department, you can equip this thing with up to 512 gigabytes of storage. 16 gigabytes of RAM is available. And I have talked about it before, but I'm still disappointed even to this day that the S21 Ultra dropped as the card support. Not cool. The S22 Ultra doesn't have it either. Doesn't feel like your power user Samsung of the past, but I think a lot of people learned that you can just kind of transfer it off to an external SSD or use cloud-based storage platforms or even use a lot of streaming-based apps where you don't really have to load your phone up that much anymore with anything besides photos and videos. But if you are going to be doing photos and videos, I recommend 256 gig because this phone is capable of doing up to 8K video recording and you are going to want to do a lot of that in this phone you're going to want to do a lot of you know high quality video taking a lot of photos so it's definitely something you're going to take notice of your storage is draining a little bit quicker if you decide to go with the 128 gig model and let's take it to the camera arguably one of the main reasons to buy it by the way i loved the s21 ultra's camera design clean right here no smudge action and you have these nice large lenses it was a beautiful camera design in addition to that you do have pro photo pro video samsung throws everything in here including a director's view where you can see two camera angles at once pretty neat not only that you do have a really good zoom factor on here it's one of the main reasons to buy this phone is its optical zooming up to 10x which will be pretty sharp in addition you can go 30x and 100x on this phone so I always love taking this one out for zoom photography and stuff like that. Not only that, you are featuring yourself a pretty good front facing camera up to 40 megapixels on here. In addition, it does have a pro mode on this phone, but I gotta say, man, it just all, all around, it's just a really well packaged camera. If we go to the video, even on the front, you can do yourself up to UHD 60. So a really good front facing high resolution video as well. Not only that, it does have really good audio performance with the video. So all across the board, I'm not going to show a bunch of photo samples here. We did that in our full reviews. You're getting a stellar camera experience and arguably definitely very comparable to even the current flagship Samsung's today and the current iPhones today or even the Pixels. So it's up there with all of those phones still. So holding its own here in mid 2022, actually heading towards the, la the latter part of 2022 i think it's going to be just fine you also won't have no issues in the area of audio Technology. welcome to the samsung galaxy s22 ultra versus the galaxy s21 ultra speed test let's begin with a boot up in three two one clearly the audio is louder from the bottom but overall it sounds pretty good so audio also very good and you might be wondering are you gonna say anything that's a con about this phone well yeah you don't have the s pen that can go inside of the body of this phone and for some people you might like a wider display it's not the 1959 you'll find on the newer samsung phones this is actually more of a 20 to 9 aspect ratio on here so definitely not quite as wide Overall though, there's not really a lot of cons to this phone. So even now that it got better with the software updates that Samsung's been throwing at this thing, it's probably even a better performer now than it was when it first came out. Battery is also something that did not disappoint on this phone. 5,000 milliamp, it charges very fast. In addition to that, it does actually make it easily through the day. So the S21 Ultra is a fantastic battery phone. Some people say they don't get great battery life. I get pretty solid battery life on here. like up there when six to seven hours sometimes eight hour screen time on here it's not going to beat my 13 pro max but it still gets through the day so it's an easy one day phone on the s21 ultra in my experience not a bad option for batteries so it does live up to a 5000 just not really going to overly impress you it's not doing the two days it's not don't look at the 5,000 number and think, oh, I'm getting two, three days now. You're gonna get one full decent day with this phone. On the phone called quality and reception, great reception strength, 5G, Qualcomm modems in here, very strong. I was actually on five bars most of the time. Sounded great on phone calls as well with these loudspeakers on board. In addition, the audio through the earpiece sounded pretty good as well. I found it to only drop one bar here and there, but it was never really letting me down. The only time I found it to lose signal was when I was on Amtrak last year and I decided to 
you know, go into states where basically there's no signal. So if you're in a place where there's absolutely no signal, no phone's gonna help you there. But overall, the phone call quality is solid on this phone. No problems whatsoever in my experience. So I just wanna wrap it up here by saying this is also a great DeX phone and has good in display fingerprint sensor. And the reason why it's a great DeX phone is because the screen is large enough, smooth enough, and the battery lasts long enough to actually just put this on a monitor wirelessly and kind of just rock out for a little while. It's got enough juice to do all of that and you could just use this as a mouse and a keyboard if you want. So it's a pretty solid overall experience there as well. So wrapping it up, you've seen I'm pretty positive about it right now. Not a lot has changed because this phone hasn't got heated up. It hasn't got bad software support. It's actually gotten better. So my experience now is quite frankly a little bit stronger than it was when I first got this phone. So I strongly recommend if you're looking for, you know, a premier Samsung, you're not a fan of the squared body, pick up the S21 Ultra. You're gonna save a lot of money and you're gonna get essentially the same type of experience you're gonna receive on a newer Samsung phone. It's really not that much different. It's pretty identical actually. And unlike with like the iPhones, you know, you go get an iPhone 13 or get an iPhone 12, that's significantly less stuff on it than like, you know, getting a Samsung S21 Ultra versus an S22 Ultra. Those are a lot more comparable, but the price of this is 660 versus like say your iPhone 12, which runs around the same, if not more brand new. So this is a great deal right now if you get what I'm saying. Thumbs up if you found a video helpful, entertaining, informing. If you do have an S21 Ultra or you've had one since launch day, you've had it for a while, please consider sharing your experience. It helps out people in the community as well decide if this is for them. And I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.